But I still think he should stay in Green Bay, Chris. I, I think that if you look at all the destinations, if you just remove him from Green Bay and look at the whole league and say, where should he go? Yeah, right. Green Bay continues to scream out as the best place. They can run the division again. Yep. The Bears and the Vikings have new coaches and new general managers. The Lions are in year two of their latest reboot. The schedule, as Peter King pointed out last Tuesday, I think it was, very favorable to the Packers being good. They play all the teams of the NFC East, all the teams of the AFC East, beyond the three teams in their own division twice each. They can fatten up their record. They can be the mm -hmm. one seed again and take another shot at getting back to the Super Bowl. And, you know, the thing I said a couple of weeks ago, if Rodgers is the one seed again with the Packers and they fail to make it, the narrative will continue to be it's the Packers' fault for not putting enough around him to get in there. If he goes somewhere else and he's the one seed and doesn't get to the Super Bowl, then all of a sudden people are going to say, oh, maybe it's him, not the Packers. Maybe he's the one who pees down his leg when, when it's time to win a game well, in the divisional round or the, or the championship. Maybe it's not the team. Maybe it's him when the full season is riding on the outcome of one game. What do you think the narrative was this year? Like, you, th you think that was still the narrative? I mean, again, maybe you have a better ear for me, I think, than the national media at times. You listen to more. What did I you feel just, like? I think it was just, here we go. I think it was just, here, here, go, here, here it goes again. Here's the Packers again. Right. With Aaron Rodgers part of it. Right. I don't think it was, it's the Packers' fault or it's Aaron Rodgers' fault. Yeah. It's just, this is what the Packers do. Yeah, right. They get the one seed and they don't make it to the Super Bowl. No, I, I, you know, it, I agree with you. I agree with you. The most logical move when you look at it from a football standpoint would be to stay in Green Bay. I want to see him leave for drama purposes. I do. I, I, I don't He's know why. He's finally come around. Yeah. It's good for our business. I do. It's I just want to see it. I just want to see it. I want to see what happens. I want to see the ripple effect. I want to see Aaron Rodgers in the uniform. I do. I certainly do. You know, and, and you know, with Green Bay – you're right. You, you're going to be there. You're going to still be the, the team in the division. You know, you're still going to be one of the better teams in the conference. But also, are they going to be able to put enough on your team to get you over the hump? Or is it going to be the same thing where, you know, again, what I would say is we, we, it's a really, really good team. It's not a great team. I just don't look at Green Bay and ever think it's a great team. I think we all think it's a great team because they've had a great quarterback. And that, to me, is where it just doesn't connect all the time. You know, good team with one great player can't beat great team, you know, with a lot of great players. And that's what we've seen Green Bay struggle with when it comes to the playoffs. They just outmatched. And, I, you know, again, with their salary cap issues and some of that, I don't know how much better their team can really be. And, you know, there's some teams in the NFC that are continuing to go in the upward dir direction right now. So I, I, I'm with you. And I, I, that to me, you know, the, I, I want to think he's going to stay in Green Bay. I mean, I mean, logically, it's not what I'm rooting for. And then you hear Tennessee this weekend, which is interesting, too, just to, to bring that up. I don't know how much how interested you were there. And, and again, I haven't heard anything oh. tangible, but that's an interesting one, because then you would think, oh, man, they get him. You know, Ryan Tannehill, I would have think would be part of the package that go up to Green Bay and he's going to start there and that's what's different at least between that and Pittsburgh and Denver is that you're going to be swapping a quarterback there I would think for sure right 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 and the Titans once the Oilers had a very stunning trade quarterback for quarterback back in the 70s Dan Pastorini for Ken Stable. I remember that happening when it's I was crazy. a kid thinking, holy crap, right, holy right. crap. I didn't know stuff like that happened. I thought guys get drafted by a team and they pretty much stay there their whole career, especially if they're quarterbacks. That's the way it was, except for the little John Unitas one year with the Chargers and Joe Namath, Joe Namath the Rams. one year with the Rams. Right. When, when, when it was clear they had nothing left, but they wanted to keep playing. As it relates to Rodgers and the Packers and the possibility of leaving, and I, I mentioned to you the notion that, that – you're realizing what's good for business. The all-time biggest day in PFT history was when 10 years ago, Peyton Manning picked the Broncos, and that same day the word came out that they were trading Tim Tebow. That was the ultimate double whammy. My only regret is the Broncos don't have a Tim Tebow that they could then trade to someone else because that would make whatever day Aaron Rodgers makes his decision possibly the biggest day in PFT history. As to the Titans, I think here's how the logic goes because, yeah. again, and and I think people with the Titans would want to throw water on the idea of maybe having Rodgers. But you know, I had a conversation with someone over the weekend about that. How far along are the Titans? Well, if Aaron Rodgers shows up on your doorstep, 
you're yeah. far along. You, 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 answer, you open the yeah, door. No doubt. You answer and, the door. And, and, right. and, what, and, what, and the response was, well, wouldn't every team do that? Well, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. If he shows up on your doorstep right. saying, I want to be your quarterback, yes. The problem is there's only a few teams that he's where he's going to potentially up. show up on your doorstep. Right, right. So if he shows up on Tennessee's doorstep and says, I want to play, of course they're going to work something out. Well, we were behind Brian Tannehill. Look, if you want to sell tickets, if you want, and this is the other thing to remember here, they're making noise about a new, new stadium. stadium. Right. What better way to deliver a new stadium than to have Aaron Rodgers for the last three or four years of his career? No doubt. And he looks like he can play guitar in a country music band. So it's perfect. It's <laughs> It's just it's right. It's a ukulele, though, when he holds it. <laughs> with his giant, those giant hands, hands that are right. bigger than yours. No, I, I think you said it right. You know, I think they are content with Ryan Tannehill. And, of course, a lot of people in the you know the sports media world are, are still being pretty harsh on Ryan Tannehill because the way he played in, in the divisional game. Yeah, he played his worst game of the year and the, and the biggest game of the year. So people are critical, and they're wondering if the Titans are going to upgrade. And John Robinson made a, you know, a comment last week about, you know, they might look to draft their quarterback of the future somewhere in this draft. And I think that just started more and more rumors of, ooh, maybe they're looking to replace Ryan Tannehill. But, yeah, I don't think they're, like, actively looking. But Rodgers, to your point and what, everything we've said, this is in his court. And this is one of those where he looked at this team and said, damn, they're real good. And damn, they really kind of physically dominated the Bengals in that divisional game. And if they had me, they probably wouldn't have thrown three interceptions and they would have won. And he's looking at it that from that standpoint. And even though Tennessee's probably saying, hey, we're good, they're going, well, <laughs> we're better with Aaron Rodgers. Sorry, I like Ryan Tannehill a lot, but we're better with Aaron Rodgers. And there's all the other moving parts that you explain that go along with it. It makes a lot of sense. Really, to me, out of the three teams you hear, I mean, if I'm Aaron Rodgers, it's going to be the most uncomfortable. You're going to go with Mike Vrabel, and he's going to give you some hard, tough looks, and he's not going to make you feel like you're the king of the world in Tennessee. But that is the team to go to if you're Aaron Rodgers. That, that, that is why I, I, I wanted to talk about it. To me, that is the team. The defense is set up. you got a running game. You know, you got a superstar receiver. They got some money to play with if they want to try to get some more offensive talent on that side of the ball, and they're really set up. And, and to me, that would be the play if he can block everything else out and make that happen. I, I really do think that would be the play. They're the Packers of the AFC. Yeah. The pretty, one seed that couldn't cash in. Pretty much. Pretty much. You're and right. It makes sense. the reason the one seed is in the worst division. That's the key. When you're in the worst division – you put yourself in a position where you can be the one seed because you fatten up on your opponents that aren't the Chiefs, the Chargers, or the Bengals, or the Ravens, if he would go to the West or the North, respectively. I, you know, I haven't heard the Colts, but... No, we haven't heard it, right? The same reason that you, that, you, that you are making... But you know what? The, Col what are the, Col the Colts don't have a first-round pick to send this year. Yes, yeah, right. The Colts disqualified themselves last year by going after Carson Wentz. Yeah, and I guess, you know, again, that, that would have to be figured out too. I mean, Carson Wentz, I don't know, would he make – if they had to make a trade for quarterback to quarterback, what what's the Green Bay fan base going to feel better about, having Carson Wentz or Ryan Tannehill come to town? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, probably Ryan Tannehill, right? I mean, I guess that's how I would feel. Carson Wentz, yeah. there's more questions, yeah. certainly. If, uh, if it's Carson Wentz, they better be damn glad that that stock can't be sold. By yeah, the people who that, bought that's it. right. That's right. But the, the Tennessee one is the one that I do look at as being very interesting. And the one that, you know, kind of heard, but seems like it kind of came to the forefront, you know, Friday a little bit when, when reports started coming out and you wrote your article to where I went, huh, I wonder if that's a real thing. And if that really is a real thing, that makes a lot of sense. You know, again, I look at I look at that situation in a lot of ways and go, well, I think that team's, you know, they're better than Green Bay. It's better than all those. It's just it's going to be uncomfortable a little bit. It's going to be a different way of life. But they're set up in all areas. And I don't know if Rodgers would just pull the trigger to go there or not. But, like, there's, there's too many ifs with all the other ones. Well, Denver, yeah, if Nathaniel Hackett works and, hey, they got to work on the front seven and, you know, we'll see. And Pittsburgh, like we talked about, you know, it's the offensive line, and hey, they got some aging guys on the defensive side of the ball, and they got to re sign Minka Patrick. There's, there's more ifs. In Tennessee, I look at it and go, damn, the team's set up. They got young talent coming up the pipeline, and they got a little money to play with. And that, that to me was where, if, if I'm a quarterback in Aaron Rodgers' shoes, I'm looking at the Tennessee Titans big time. That would be the team I'd have circled on, on my list. 
Let's completely change the perspective here because I'm reminded of the 1998 NFC Championship game back in the days when I was an ardent fan of the Vikings. If you haven't heard that yet, you're hearing it for the first time. What now. do you mean back in the sure day? You yet. still are. What are you talking no, about? Trust me. Trust me. Tr especially, no. Although, although I enjoyed Kevin O'Connell, I still wanted hardball. But I really <laughs> enjoyed talking to Kevin O'Connell last week. I was impressed with him. But back in 1998, when the Vikings were 15-1, and one, it was Randy Moss's rookie year. This is the team. This is the time. Unfinished business for all those years in the 70s when they didn't get it done. I remember when that game against the Falcons went to overtime. I was so emotionally spent that I just wanted it to be over with. I didn't care what happened. I just wanted this experience in my life to end. And I mention that because... I wonder how many people within the Packers organization just want this to end. Oh, my they God. They know Aaron Rodgers is going to leave at some point. The whole they league They know it's going to happen. Can we just get this over with? Especially, and, you know, we, we said this last week, and I know people get mad at me when I point this out, but some of the things Brian Gutekunst says publicly, unless – there's kind of an impish quality to it, and Aaron Rodgers knows the truth and knows what's going on. There's still an element of, does Brad Gutekunst really just, at a time when it looks like Rodgers is going to stay, is he trying to, to tweak Rodgers enough so he leaves? Just to be done with it. Let me get on with this Jordan Love guy that I drafted two years ago, trade it up to get in round one. Let's move forward. We have to move forward at some point. And if I'm, if I'm a guy who is Packers way, the way they always do things, dating back to the culture that Ron Wolf brought to the team 30 years ago. I'm uncomfortable with how much power we've given this guy. I'm uncomfortable right. with the fact that I had to bring back Randall Cobb last year when I didn't have him on the team for a reason. I'm uncomfortable with the fact that I got strong-armed into bringing back Tom Clements to be the quarterback's coach when he wasn't with the team for a reason. I don't like this. If I'm somebody who's in a seat of power in Green Bay. Now, I don't know how many others there <laughs> feel that way. And I don't even know if Gutekunst does. But I'd like to think somebody in the organization has to be saying, good Lord, what are we doing here? We're basically giving the keys to the franchise to this guy. At some point, just call his bluff and tell him to get the hell out if he doesn't like it here. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm sure they are thinking that. I feel like the whole league is a little exhausted by Aaron Rodgers. I'm not going to lie. When I call around and talk to people, they're all like, oh, oh. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. It's, it's, it, I really feel like everybody's like that. Everybody. It just They're sick of talking about it. They're sick of talking about the drama there. How could Green Bay not be sick of it? How could they not? But what I will remind Green Bay, even though you are sick of it, I want to go, you made this drama, so eat it and deal with it. You did it. It's your fault. Shut up. Deal with it. I don't care. That's what I want to say to Green Bay. You know, of course they're exhausted by going to the combine and every media press conference, and they got to answer questions about Rodgers and the future of their team and where they're at, and is he happy? How the hell could any GM or president of a team like to deal with that all the time? But, again, I don't, I'm don't. i not shedding any tears. They all dried up. They all dried up. But the way they did Jordan Love and not even warning Rodgers and everything that way, again, they made this bet. So they can sleep in it and deal with it, and you're not going to see any tears from the PFT crew over here. Hey, speaking of drafting Jordan Love without warning Aaron Rodgers, I do have to mention something here. We started the segment with a reference to my book, Playmakers. I want to close the segment by pointing out something that was in the book, still sure. is in the book, hasn't been removed from the book, but Sean Payton actually spoke publicly about it to GQ, and we wrote about it on Friday afternoon. When they drafted Marshawn Lattimore right. in 2017, they had their eyes on Patrick Mahomes. Yes. Sean Payton loved Patrick Mahomes. Number one player on their board. Exciting quarterback prospect he'd ever seen. They worked right. him out privately. Now, he doesn't go all the way to GQ and say, we were definitely taking Mahomes if he was there at 11. I think they were definitely taking Mahomes. I think so, too. Everybody you talk to would think that. Yes, right. So here's the twist that we have in Playmakers, but Peyton told GQ about it on Friday. As they're in the draft room, it just so happens Drew Brees is in the building with some of his buddies. Right, showing them a facility, right? Like kind of showing, showing them, them around. around. Like, hey, showing look, here's – yeah, right, right. And, and they're like, oh, crap. And, <laughs> and Drew walks into the draft room. <laughs> right. And they're like, oh, crap. We may be taking a quarterback while – Drew is here with his friends. So, and, and it just shows you not every team 
is going to share those plans, even right. with a Drew Brees, even right. with a franchise quarterback. You're not going to tell them that you're planning to do this. And I think part of it, too, was that Sean Payton and company in New Orleans were so intent on keeping their They're secret. They're keeping it quiet. Secret. No doubt. Yes. No doubt. But that's why you don't tell him. Right. But they had to go, they had to go tell him real quickly that there may be a quarterback taken with the 11th overall pick in the draft. So that was an unexpected curveball. Amazing. For the and then Saints Andy Reid called the day, called and saved the day for Drew. He didn't have to deal with that maybe, crap. Maybe maybe Drew texted Andy Reid and said, yeah, "Hey, yeah, hey, <laughs> hey, rumor <laughs> has it rumor has it the Saints are hot on Mahomes. You better move on." <laughs> <laughs> uh, seriously. Anyway, but, but that look, they, they, one of the problems between Rodgers and the Packers, they had no What's the word? Bedside manner yeah. with Rodgers when the time came to take Jordan Love. It stunned the hell out of him. That, that, that was the thing that yeah. started all this two years ago. Right. And, that's the th and, and I think the other side of it, too, is there's a shelf life on how long this drama can last. I think it's one of the reasons why Russell Wilson's instincts have caused him to pull it back dramatically. You can't have year after year after year of offseason quarterback drama. It's got to happen. If the, if the drama's there, it's got to happen or it's got to be put to bed for good. And I think that's the end result here. If he stays in Green Bay, it can't be for one more year. Yeah, it's got to be, be yeah, a I'm retirement here. contract, right. and this is over. This is done. He's never leaving the Packers. Agreed Agreed with you there. This is one where if he makes the decision to go back to Green Bay, it's got to be final, and that's it. Stop putting the organization through this. You know, Don't put yourself through it. You know, give them the commitment. You're going to be there so they can build the team appropriate, appropriately around you that way, too. Uh, but, yeah, I, I would think, you know, I would hopefully that would be the case once he decides to come back. He's kind of come to the terms that, OK, Green Bay is my place. I'm here until the end of my career. And they'll have to figure out what to do with Jordan Love, of course, uh, you know, as far as that's concerned, too. So we'll see where that goes. But I got to think we're getting to the end here. I got to think where we're getting to end. And. I still based think, on everything he's said, we have to be getting to the we end. We got to be getting to the end. Based on everything he's said, right? And we're there. Based on everything Russell Wilson did not say, I still. I mean, as we've seen this weekend, he's available. Teams are calling. There, he wants. He's he wants to flirt with teams. If the right situation presents itself, I really think he's going to put the pressure on the Seahawks and go make it happen. Trade me. I want to go here. I mean, teams are calling. As we know, we see picks are being offered to the Seattle Seahawks for Russell Wilson. So this is another thing to watch out for with this Rodgers thing. I got to think well, both of these things might happen here if they do happen in the next week. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.